What you're looking at is the PDC-3N and the PDC-3M, yes. They are EFIS for the 737NG, PD-3CN, and MAX, PDC-3M. There are differences between these two panels, and we're going to be taking a look at that today. So Wing Wing gave us the PAP-3 panel. And the PAP-3, as you know, is the autopilot panel for the Boeing 737. A long requested and awaited and finally delivered by Wing Wing. And we love this thing. This thing is huge. We put it all the way back there. This is going to be on your desk, but it's about to get bigger because we're going to be adding these two panels here to it, which is basically the EFIS, one for the NG and uh, one for the MAX. And as I said before, there are differences between the two. But now, let's look at the 3N for the NG. And uh, let's start with the minimums here. Minimums, you have the radio mins and the barrel mins. And the first thing that I learned right away, which is very interesting, is that this knob, I thought it was a knob that you spin completely around. No, you actually turn it and hold it, and it's spring-loaded and springs back. Same thing the other direction. See, if you want to go up and down in the count, you hold these things and they spring back and forth. I swear these were dials that you turn completely around 360 degrees until you get where you need to be. Um, barrel, inches per mercury and HPA on the barrel, same thing. You squeeze and hold and it springs back to you. So it's all spring loaded on these. I was blown away. I thought these were just turned. We've been doing simming for so long and you know, that's what you get. Uh, you have the VOR, uh, ADF off, VR ADF on, it's pretty cool. You got the plan mode, map mode, VOR, and approach. All these modes and the, s the switch clicks on these are solid and firm, you could hear it. You also have the center button that you use sometimes on that. Very solid switches out anyway. You also have the range knob. Uh, range knob starts from five and count all the way up to 640 miles. I assume, and I love the click on that, how it feels. And then you have the traffic button. Traffic, press that, you know it comes up on the screen. Uh, weather, station, waypoint, airport, data, position, and terrain buttons. All these buttons feel good. These are like rubberized buttons. Switches are a nice solid feel click. And the quality is just overall wing-wing quality for the NG, uh, FPV button and meters button as well. I guess you're flying in China, get the meters button. So that's it. And also now, let's compare it to the MAX. Here comes the differences that I didn't realize. Can you guys spot the differences between a MAX and the NG? There are a few differences here that I noticed right away. Let me go to the first difference here. So on the range knob on the NG, you got 5, 10, 20, 40, 80 miles. And then on the range knob on the max, there is no miles anymore. And this spins around freely. It doesn't stop. You just keep turning it all the way around. I am learning. That's how the max is. Just keep spinning it all the way around compared to the NG that has preset range. And that once it gets to the end, it stops right there. It doesn't go any further. Uh, the other buttons are fairly similar. You got the traffic button, you got the center button, the plan mode, the map mode, and so forth. So those are the main things. Also, barrow, same spring loaded with the barrow, springs back towards you when you go. And same thing with the minimum button. There you go. You just hold it, hold it, it spins, and so forth, and so on. So yeah, this is the different knob between the two. And of course, this has a VSD button that that doesn't have. So I think that's for vertical situation display. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Press that and that will show up under the bottom of the, the, um, the navigation display. Show your vertical profile as you're descending or ascending. So those are the two different things. The range knob and the VSD button 
for the EFIS panels. Let's take a look at the back and see what's there. Uh, on the back, just your regular USB 3.0 uh, on it, and you have the space for the mountain to attach it to the PAP3. So they're going to be attached, and then you have um, a light that comes on that let you know it's there, and a little bracket to hold the USB. Same thing for the Max EFIS. Uh, you have the USB connector. You have the connector part. Now here's a great thing about this. Here's one thing I realized. You can, let's say that you only fly the Max or only fly the NG. You have a right and a left. Right now it's a right configuration, I'm sorry, a left configuration for the NG and a right configuration for the Max. The beautiful part about this, you can actually remove the top part of this. You can remove the top. There's two screws right here to remove the top and you could take this top off and then now make this become the left side. So just remove the top off of them, swap them around, or only go with one or the other, right or left, and you could take the top panels off and make this this way around and the top will line up properly with the uh, PAP3 over there. We've been waiting for the EFIS to come out for the NG and uh, I'm glad that Wing Wing is showing Boeing some love and not just <laughs> the Airbus. I mean, they have the whole Airbus cockpit at this point that they're doing, but I'm happy that they're showing Boeing some love. All right, so I had to break out the tape measure to see what the actual size of the two EFIS, the N and the M, and the PAT3 panel is. What do you think it's gonna be? 27 and a half inches, call it 28 inches you're looking at. I have no idea what that is in meters, <laughs> but it is pretty, pretty wide. So make sure you have the appropriate desk space for this because it is gonna take up some serious space on your desk. But that's how it is in real life. That is life-size panels you're looking at for your cockpit. And this is a thing of beauty. Absolutely, absolutely love this. Also for reference, it's about uh, three and a half inches high, just for you guys who are planning your cockpit. And the depth of it, about two inches deep without the brackets. I have the brackets here. I have in the switch for the auto throttle disconnect. And you are going to need one two and three separate USB-C ports to make this thing work. But she is a thing of beauty. Here it is for scale. We got the tape measure behind it and here's how wide it looks. It is very wide, but man, do we have buttons or do we have buttons to play with on this thing? But all in all, this is a great addition to the Boeing series of autopilot panels from Wing Wing. They're stepping up their game in the market and we look forward to using this in the sim. All you need is SimApp Pro, plug and play, and it will work with the various 737s and possibly also the 777 in Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane.